Hey there, everybody. Uh, so this is Will Nations, also known as Will Nations Dev. Uh, here, just trying to demo a little bit of the new plugin that I've been working on called the Inheritance Doc. Um, as you might have noticed, I have this brand new doc over here on the right hand side um, that I've defined. And basically, it comes up with three different tabs for scenes, scripts, and resources. And the intent is just to make it really easy for you to quickly switch between scenes in your project. So I can just double click on these different scenes that I've created and it'll open them up. Um, I can also click within a, a node in a scene. And I have a couple of different options that I have available here. So I can click on the uh, instance and it'll actually add whatever my selected scene is here. So if I click this can see that uh, it actually is supposed to take me to, oh, I'm already in the damage effect scene, so that's probably why. If I'm in here, go to damage effect scene, try to instance this on the base. Now if I click on this, it takes me to the damage effect scene, yeah. So it just instanced damage effect, um, and then I can also extend a scene, so if I have damage effect here, and I click on this, I'm like, oh, new damage effect dot TSCN. And I can save this and hit save and bam. Now I have new damage effect listed under my damage effect. So it's a and it's an inheritance hierarchy um, system. Um, so it will actually load all of these different resources, which is a little bit pricey. So you have to take that into account. Um, with the size of your projects, this might be getting a little bit slow if you're loading a whole bunch of resources because um, it has to load them in order to determine the inheritance hierarchies. So be a little conscientious of that. Um, and uh, so that's scenes. And I can also, you know, just kind of type in like, oh, damage effect, blah, blah, blah. And I can um, filter it also with custom regex filters. So here I have a hide inheritance doc filter. And I've de you know defined this whole regex pattern that blocks out the entire directory for Godot inheritance doc. Uh, so it this little check mark tells me that I have a good one. So if I put invalid regex, it lets me know. Um, and then if I toggle it on, I'll see that all my stuff goes away because this is all stuff that's in my Godot inheritance stuff. So if I untoggle this, things return. And uh, the same kind of goes for scripts. I can see all the different scripts that I have in my project. Um, the main reason for this implementation is just that I hated, like even if I did an add custom type of some sort, um, you know, just clicking on here to find something, all of your scripts don't show up in this list. I can't just see an inheritance hierarchy of my scripts and in my entire project. And this lets me do that. I, I no longer have to, you know, go digging around in the file system. I don't necessarily know where I've put all my stuff, you know, to, to find things. I can just kind of go here. And if I'm looking for a specific thing, I can type it in and I can create custom filters for them. And each of the filters in these lists are different. So if I go to scenes and I add one, say hi, and I'm looking for, you know, test stuff, stuff that mentions test. So I can click on this. I don't have anything named test, but you can get the idea. I've added this in here and I can even save it. So now if I close and reopen the editor, we'll see that this is still here. But if I go to scripts and click on this, it's not there. So I have complete customization of whatever filters I want to create for each of these sections. And uh, for the scripts, you'll notice I can add a script to a node. So if I create a new node and I do uh, damage effect, click on here and add script, I now have my damage effect script on there. And it's a little hard to see. Eh, damage effect, whatever. Um, and then I can also do instancing for scripts, so it'll create a new node with the base type and then attach the script to that node, and that'll be generated underneath. So again, I can just click this and bam, I have another node that also has damage effect attached to it. And if damage effect was deriving something uh, more, I just double clicked that by the way, if it was deriving something different, then it would create that type of node and then put the script on it. So that's, that's kind of how that works. 
Um, and then finally, we have this resources tab. Um, and basically, so it'll show the in-engine resources as well as, well, so it, it shows the, the resources and text resources that you have in your project, as well as whatever inheritance hierarchies they have, whether those inheritance hierarchies are in-engine types or whether you have a script defining that inheritance hierarchy, right? So I created this new res.tres file, which actually inherits, um, which, which has the res.gd resource script attached to it. And if I click on here, I can edit the resource in my inspector and we'll notice res.gd is the script. And technically it's still just a resource type, which is why the res.gd, which also inherits resource, is under the resource section. And so I have button group and I'm like, oh, here's a, here's a button group that I created. This is, you know, in here and I could create a script for it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how it goes. And, and I can create new resources from here. Um, if I select a script, then it'll create the base type resource that has the script attached, whatever the base type for the script is. And if I have a base type selected, I can also create a script from there. So really quick and easy, you can create stuff from the editor um, without ever having to dive into the other menus. Um, and then the last thing in here is just, if you select some kind of asset in your project that's listed here, you can cl click this and it'll find it in the file system. So you can do more sophisticated operations like, you know, delete and open and, you know, or rename, whatever. All the more customization stuff that file system doc provides. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, the code is very shortly, uh, should soon um, be integrated into, right now this is all in godot-node-editor. Um, and it's in a demo project. I have created another, sorry, that's under my github.com slash willnationsdev profile. Um, I have created another repository for godot-inheritance-doc, and that is eventually gonna be just the add-on with the updated code, um, but I haven't moved that stuff over, so um, not yet anyway. Uh, it, by the time you see this, it might have already been there. But anyway, just give a check and see um, whether the updated code is there. I'll, you know, in the commit history, I'll be like, this is the updated code. So um, yeah, just go ahead and check it out. Um, please star it if you're interested in it and share it around. If you think this is a good addition to Godot Engine, uh, probably helpful for your projects. Uh, I know I'm going to be using it a lot because I love just being able to click here and jump between my stuff uh, really easily. So yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoy the project. Please let me know if you encounter any bugs with it and uh, keep me updated. Thank you very much.